We are back with another video in the Hoop Scoop Media Top 100 Countdown. At number 30 team in the country, we have the Alabama Crimson Tide. What's up, college basketball fans? I'm Hoop Scoop Media co-founder Austin Getchy, and welcome to the Hoop Scoop Media Top 100 College Basketball Teams Countdown. In this series, we'll be counting down our top 100 teams for next season and releasing a video every day until the college basketball season begins. If you enjoy this content, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and give our social medias a follow. Simple things like that help more college basketball fans like you enjoy our content. With that being said, enjoy the rest of the video and 99 other videos in this series. Alabama completely broke through last season and was the best team in the country in the regular season, earning the number one overall seed. They were held up by their defense, ranked third nationally, and were also one of the fastest teams in the country, playing the fourth fastest tempo, which has been a stable of Nate Oates coaching overall. In Oates' four years with the Crimson Tide, he's won the conference twice. Despite likely not being nationally as good this year, there's still lots of program I mentioned being built, and although it'll always be in the shadows of the football program, Alabama basketball is really coming into its own. However, obviously I don't have Alabama super high in rankings compared to where they were last year, largely because of the pieces they lost. Brandon Miller, who was the best freshman in the country, left for the NBA draft where he was picked second. Noah Clowney was another freshman that was drafted, being picked 21st. Charles Bediaco also started his pro career. Jaden Bradley transferred to Arizona. Javon Quinterly transferred to Memphis. Namari Burnett transferred to Michigan and Noah Gurley exhausted his eligibility. One impactful piece returning from last year's team is Mark Sears. Sears was an all-conference player last year, averaging double-digit points on efficient offense. One thing to watch with him this year is his passing abilities, as he'll likely take a step up into the lead point guard role, an area he excelled at when he was playing at Ohio. Next to him in the backcourt will be two-time CEA Player of the Year Aaron Estrada from Hofstra. He's a three-level scorer that averaged over 20 points per game last year and also showed some playmaking abilities. There are some concerns, however, with him as he struggled in his previous high major time at Oregon and he struggles on defense, but I think he will be a high-impact SEC starter. Another low major transfer Oath brought in was Grant Nelson from North Dakota State, the star of NBA Draft Twitter last season. He was an efficient inside scorer and dominant rebounder in the Summit, and has some very intriguing offensive skills with his mobility. The Summit does play minimal defense, but Nelson can still make an impact at this level. Wing Rylan Griffin also returns, who could really break out. He wasn't super efficient last year, but showed scoring flashes and played decent minutes for a freshman on a great team. With more of a role this year, he could really jump offensively. Alabama has a few big man options, but are lacking a proven starter. Nick Pringle played some reserve minutes last year, and was an elite rebounder and efficient scorer around the rim, in addition to being a decent rim protector. Mohamed Wagu, a transfer from West Virginia, has similar attributes to Pringle, being an effective rebounder, especially on offensive glass, in addition to his defensive abilities. Oates also brought in a high-level transfer from Cal State Fullerton, in guard Latrell Wrightsell Jr. He was an all-conference player in the Big West, averaging over 16 points per game. In conference play, he shot extremely well from deep, at over a 41% rate. He should be good as a scoring point guard off the bench for the Crimson Tide. The other returner is guard Davin Cosby, who enrolled early and registered last year. Oates also brings in a high-level freshman class. Jaron Stevenson is a forward reclass from 2024. He's very athletic with a good frame, has some intriguing skills. He has lots of upside and should be a name to watch over the years. Sam Walters is a skilled power forward with good shooting abilities but has defensive concerns. Mohamed Diabate is a physical forward who excels at defense and rebounding. The final commit is Chris Parker, a wing with lots of potential who probably won't play a ton right away. Overall, even though Alabama won't be as good as they were last year, they're still a solid team. My biggest concern is the defense. The two years Oates has won the SEC, he's had elite defenses, and in the other years where Alabama has struggled, the defenses haven't been amazing. I'm not a fan of their defensive pieces, which is why I think they'll be worse than last year. I currently have the Crimson Tide sitting at 6 in the SEC, but they could reasonably climb a few places higher. Alabama fans, comment below your thoughts and where you'd personally have the Crimson Tide ranked this season. We will be back tomorrow for a number 29 team in the country. Subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss it.